All right, thanks for starting the week with us. I'm Will Salva, and it is news time. And we had to say 2020 was definitely a memorable year for the Cleveland Browns franchise. Not only did they make the playoffs for the first time in 18 years, but they won their first playoff game since 1994. It makes one particular Ohio native fired up. Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. Well, back in Cleveland for Jarvis Landry's celebrity softball game, Kelsey says the Browns are definitely contenders in the AFC. In fact, Kelsey says, quote, I think the Browns and Chiefs are definitely neck and neck for sure. Speaking of those Chiefs, former Kansas City running back Le'Veon Bell making it clear he won't be returning to the Chiefs, responding to an Instagram comment. He said he'll never play for Andy Reid again and they'd retire first. Bell clearly a little bitter he didn't play in the Chiefs' final two playoff games last season. Meanwhile, in Miami, NFL Network insider Ian Rapport is reporting the Dolphins signing linebacker Jerome Baker to a three-year $39 million extension on Sunday. Baker, who was headed into the final year of his rookie deal, finished second on the team with seven sacks in 2020, which were a career high. And Rams wide receiver Van Jefferson says he's feeling more comfortable heading into his second season in the NFL. Jefferson saying his head was spinning as he worked to learn the Rams offense. He says the Zoom call certainly helped last year, but is happy to be on the field learning in person this year. And we saw a lot of the wide receivers struggle last year due to not having a traditional offseason due to the pandemic. But Okay, guys, it will be fun to see the likes of Jefferson or a C.D. Lamb or a Henry Ruggs take that next step after having a full traditional offseason. It's so true. We've been talking wide receivers so much, of course, given Julio Jones, one of the biggest stars, switching teams. Last week was heavy on receivers. We're going to talk tandems to start this week. Thank you so much, Will. Our guy Bucky Brooks has an article. He lists his top five best pass-catching tandems in the NFL. Go check it out at NFL.com. You can read it. It's NFL.com slash scouts notebook. So I want to know, does Nate, simply, you're looking at 2021. We're almost at training camp. Which group is intriguing you the most? The Giants wide receivers, I hear a lot of hype about them right now, and rightfully so. I mean, they have some playmakers. You know, they let Golden Tate walk away. They bring in Kenny Galladay. We know that Sterling Shepard is there. I'm a huge fan of Darius Slayton. And I'll add the tight ends on that. We forget that Kyle Rudolph is here. Evan Ingram was a pro bowler last season. And the reason they're exciting to me is because not just the talent at wide receiver and tight end, they also have Saquon in the backfield. So I'm part, if I'm part of this group, I'm motivated for many reasons, right? Sterling Shepard wants to prove that he's a legitimate wide out that can play in any offense because he's been a little banged up. Kenny Galladay, he got paid mm -hmm. big time. Darius Slayton, he wants to get paid big time. I'm looking at the Giants wideouts. Giants wideouts, we know those names. Like we're, I, Nate, Kyle, K, the Patriots wideouts, I'm fascinated to see how this plays out. Ew. They spent money. They went and they got Kendrick <laughs> Bourne. They went and they got Nelson Aguilar. But I, it's time. It, last year, let's take a look at how, how just horrendous this wide receivers group was. The guys who were in the building. At Patriots touchdowns from their wide receivers. Two, one, one. That was it. Four from the entire group. Not a lot to, to glean off of on that, but they spent big money on Bourne and Aguilar. They think that Nikhil Harry can make a jump. They didn't take a wide receiver with the 15th overall pick. They went quarterback. Fascinating to see what we get from New England and Josh McDaniels' offense. Two tight ends are great. Got to have some wide receivers. Who's it going to be? Never been more excited to watch the New Orleans Saints having so much to do with Jameis, but of course the wide receivers. Look, it's Michael Thomas and it's probably Traquan as the second one, but there's an interesting thing with Michael Thomas. You know, I remember that the great baseball slugger Gary Sheffield was called into question once about some of the comments that he made about Ichiro Suzuki, where he basically intimated, look, he hits singles and uses his legs to beat him out. Anybody could do that. I could do that if I tried, hit some home runs. And there's a thing with Michael Thomas where he is looked at as slant man where he was very productive and very short range and had a thing with Drew Brees, but he is not a fully well-rounded number one receiver. Can't go deep, can't stretch the field, can't run. I mean, it's out there. It's out there a lot. And now he's with a different quarterback. And I, listen, since he won Offensive Player of the Year over Christian McCaffrey and won 1,000 and 1,000, Thomas won. Since then, 
some bad stuff with teammates, some injuries. He's kind of been poof off the radar. Big year for Michael Thomas. Is he a top 10 guy? Is he a top five guy? I don't know. Is he a top 20 guy? Lots to prove because there's a lot of talk out there about what he is and what he isn't. A lot of intrigue at GMFB with your thoughts, everybody. I'll go Ravens quickly. I said all offseason, add some receivers. Surround your guy with some talent. They did. They add Rashad Bateman. They add Sammy Watkins. And I think that their leap to try to be at the Super Bowl in Los Angeles this year has a lot to do with this group's ability to take a big step. This team can run. They can play defense. But in big moments in the playoffs, I really don't think that they had surrounded him with enough talent. They did so. I love the steps they took. And if it all comes together, I do think we could see these Ravens at, in the Super Bowl. All right, Lamar Jackson speaking.